Thank you for letting us come today. Me this is too. great. And where are we? Welcome to the Armenian Museum, the Mardigan Armenian Museum. Mardigan. They must yes. be Armenians. Yes, they oh, are. Wonderful. And they are the ones who collaborated in uh, paying a lot of money to renovate this. Oh, place. wonderful. Well, show Let's us what go. we have in here. Yes, please. The, the um, building here is just beautiful. Act it, yes, yeah. actually it was never a museum at the beginning. Okay. It was a place for the priests to study theology, for the Armenian priests. Oh, so it kind of looks like a hallway you might walk around yes. to take a what break from classes. Do, they used to study here and at the same time they used, some of them used to live here. So we met the director of the museum here. Uh, Father, would you like to introduce yourself? to our Western Christians that want to know more about the Armenians and what this is? First, you are welcome to our Museum of Jerusalem Patriarchate. The museum is represent the Armenian present in Holy Land, and I am the director of the museum, Father Ashraq Kazarian. How long have you been a priest? It's already five years that I ordained as a priest. Isn't that beautiful? We can continue to pray for his perseverance. Five years, a very young priest. That's wonderful. Thank you for You're giving welcome. your life to the Lord. You're welcome. From so classes. They used to study here, and at the same time, they used, some of them used to live here. Wow. It was like that from the 1835 until the times of the Armenian massacre in 1915-20 when a lot of orphanages, orphans used to come here oh. and we didn't know where to put them. So oh. we decided to take out all the priests and put them somewhere else mm -hmm. and bring the kids here and to live here. The mm -hmm. boys lived here, about 260 uh, kids. The, our, the girls, they went to the Greek Orthodox uh, Church at the, um, the Cross Church, which is on, t on the road to Talbia. It, it would be the Holy Cross, yes, right? Exactly. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So the boys stayed here until 1924, wow. 25. Then mm -hmm. they left, they grew up, they left because they were old already. They were sure. seven, eight. And they grew up? Mm -hmm. Yes. So afterwards, they closed. They made it another time, a theology center, but then they closed for a good. Yeah. And then they thought of why not doing it as a museum? Wow. If you could help us to understand more about the Armenian genocide, we know some things, but it would be good to refresh our memory. Because I sure. think, from what I understood in the shop, um, there's different, there's Armenians that have been here from before, and then Armenians that came over okay. after 1915. So what happened at Okay, that point? so when you say Armenians from before, because they came when the pilgrims started and so on, so they started living here afterwards. As for the ones in 1915, mm -hmm. I am one of them because my wow. family came. In 1915, we used to be very happily living in Armenia and in south of Armenia and Turkish Turkey, where there are a lot of Armenian cities. Where it borders one. Turkey, doesn't yes, it? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, things went the wrong way, mm -hmm. and uh, Turks started uh, slaughtering and killing a lot of Armenians. It's just like a, a, like a, a cultural it, clash in a way. Uh, it was more than that. It okay. was political culture. It was a lot of things. Mm because Armenians started reaching a lot of good places in the parliament of the Turkish. Okay. So some Turks did not like that because, you know, they started having some strength more, more than I, we have to. So in, uh, on the 24th of April, 1915, they brought all the intellectuals and the, the very smart people. They mm. put them in the middle of Istanbul and they hang them. them. Oh my goodness, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of priests, um, scientists, and people from the parliament, which people used to love them, especially Turks and Armenians, they were okay at the beginning. But then of sudden, all of a sudden, a lot of things happened. So massacred them, and then, my, like my family and my mom's family, they took them one night, said that, don't take anything with you, just come with us. And then maybe you'll be back. Mm -hmm. So of course they believed. They took uh, nothing with them except for what they were uh, wearing, and they started walking. It was a long walk from the, where, the places they were, they were living in until reaching Derzor. Derzor is in Aleppo, very near to Syria. What? Yes. Oh my gosh, how some many of them days the, was that? Yes, how many weeks. Oh my goodness. Uh, some of them died on the road because sure. they could not take it anymore. Some of them started to f 
it was a very uh, it like it was just like a horror movie of course yeah. because how do i know because my grandmother used to talk mm -hmm. to about this and mm -hmm. my grandfather mm -hmm. so of course not much but yes they did so they reached until uh, their source some of them were saved by the neighborhood people which were very nice of course they were mostly arab muslims mm -hmm. but they did save them until they reached their, their zor over there most of them died they uh, push them in a very big hole which is still today over there when you go there and there's a church there near Aleppo yes mm -hmm. it is called their Zor very near but it is the borders from Aleppo and here so uh, and some of them were saved again over there by uh, the Syrians the Jordanians like my family from by the Jordanians and they lived afterwards a very good life I was of course not forgetting the old sure so were most of the Armenians uh, Christians I understand right they are Christians yes. not most of them they are Christians. they are Christians because and we are proud of it because we are the first nation <laughs> exactly to become Christians in 301 yes and that's because I believe it was your the leader of the Armenian yes. people who yes. accepted the Christian faith and everybody. Yes. Actually, before that, there were two saints that went there. One of them was Saint Bartholomew, and the other one was Saint Jude Theodor Theodosius. Oh my goodness, that's Those Theodosius. Two. That's why there's so many monasteries with his name. Exactly. Well, tell us about this mosaic. I know it's probably the central point here yes. of uh, the museum. Actually, it was not here before. Okay. Five years ago, it used to be somewhere else. It has oh. its history. Okay. It's a story, let's say. Oh, wonderful. Well, well it's, it's a beautiful mosaic, actually. Yes, you can tell is. that it's ancient. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. it is. It's from the sixth century, actually. Wow. And at the beginning, they thought that it was Byzantine, but then they found out that it's Armenian because of the Yeah, it looks Byzantine. Writing. Because of the what? Writing. The writing is in Armenian. Where is the, oh, on the on top. top. Oh, it yes. is Armenian. Yes. Oh my goodness. That's why it's here. So early, uh, no, uh, late 80s, I think it was 18, wait, let me check. Let me be sure so that I won't say anything. Sure. Yes, it is true. 1894, late 18. Okay. Uh, what happened, an old man in Musrara, Musrara, which is very close to Jerusalem, very, very close, like uh, very close to Damascus Gate. Sure. He started digging to build a house. What? Yes. Uh, <laughs> and then suddenly he saw colorful stuff and then sure. he continued and he found that there's a mosaic. He asked the authorities and they said stop. When they found out that it was Armenian, the Armenians came and they saw what they did is they bought the land underneath and made him build the, the house on top. Okay. So it stayed like that until five, six years ago. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. That's no, a no, long no. time. Yeah. So it's actually outside of the Damascus Gate, his house. Yes. It's amazing. Exactly. Okay. And uh, there's another surprise, which is when we, st we decided to bring it here because this is Armenian and we're yeah. going to renovate it, uh, we started cutting it. Of course, not us, the, the mm -hmm. professionals. Suddenly they found bones, bones of 300 soldiers. Underneath the mosaic. Underneath. So this would have been a place of honor for them. Yes, perhaps. it seems that it used to be a place uh, where they put um, the soldiers who fought at the times of the Romans, of course they were Christians, and they put them here, they were Armenians. Mm. So that's why over there it's written, may God bless the souls of those who have no name. So very clearly God bless them. This would have been yes. a Christian yes. place. It would have been perhaps, perhaps a church. And we, we may not, we not know, but mm -hmm. yes, maybe it is. My goodness. Yes. So I know that we're right next to the Church of St. James, which yes. is the Armenian uh, cathedral here. Yes. And where you can, you know, pray with the seminarians. They have vespers, I think, every single day. Every single day, 6.30 in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh gosh, 6.30 in the morning. I don't yes. know how many pilgrims would go to and that. And they yeah. also have mass every sun Saturday and Sunday, depending oh. on the schedule that they have. Sometimes it's at St. James, sometimes it's at uh, the Holy Sepulcher. Well, oh, neat. Okay. Well, I know that um, St. James has a relationship, the, the actual church and even the Armenian quarter. Yes. When did it all start? Okay. So now the Armenian quarter, uh, it is thanks to the Queen Melisanda, who was married to one of the um, crusaders. Now she was Armenian? Yes, she was Armenian ah. because at the time the crusaders reached the Armenian uh, Armenia, that's where he found her and he married her and she came here. Of course, because she was a very uh, religious and, you know, most Armenians are very religious until now, actually. So she came here and she saw, she loved it. She started buying land. That's how we have the Armenian quarter. Oh my goodness. A lot of land that she bought. And this is what, how we got all this. 
Nice. Yes, including St. James. As we come back to the Cathedral Church of St. James, let's join our prayers with those of the Armenian seminarians as they sing the Our Father in the ancient language of Armenian. <laughs> Now we have the special blessing of joining one of the Armenian priests here in the Holy Sepulchre, going into the Armenian chapel and behind it to see an ancient engraving, an ancient graffiti of a pilgrim who came here to pray to the Lord. Thank you. Here, it was found here. Yes. Ah, thank you, thank you. So, we have the special blessing that the um, Armenians allowed us to come back here. And you might ask yourself, where are we? We came behind what is the Catholicon where we've been filming, and this is very far down. We're very close to. Well, you can see that this was part of the quarry right around us. And when they were doing excavation work, the archaeologists found this. And what's extraordinary about this, I'm just going to explain it quickly, is it's a first, second, first century boat, first century, second century boat. And so when they studied it, and you can see how they've outlined the black parts of it, it says, Lord, we have come. So what's the significance of having it right here? Well, if you remember at that time, this was before Constantine ever built the church, before Helen had him build this. This was a time when there was a pagan temple placed here by Hadrian. And so 
the fact that you would have pilgrims coming here is significant. Pilgrims like you, pilgrims like me, and we can make these words our own. Lord, we have come. They came in a boat, this first, second century boat. We have come through virtual means, and we have come in our hearts, and we have come in the ship, the boat of the church. So right now I'm going to pray a very special prayer for each and every one of you, and what a wonderful way to finish up our reflections about the Our Father in Armenian. Uniting my prayers to the prayers of all of those pilgrims so, so many years ago.